personal finance PowerPoint presentation. Selecting an apartment overview. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia, Six Tips When Renting an Apartment by Raina Gobble, updated June 10th, 2021. So you can go there for more references and resources and continue your research at that point. In prior presentations, we've been thinking about the thought process for larger purchase items, those that will have an impact for multiple periods into the future. We then talked about the home and whether or not we should rent or we should purchase the home. And now we're focusing more on the rental side of things in future presentations. We'll think more about the purchasing side of things. So note when we're thinking about the spectrum on our financial decisions in terms of, is this a short-term decision or long-term decision? The renting is kind of more in the middle. When we're looking at those short-term decisions, those that we make every day, then we're typically gonna to try to hone down our habits. We're gonna train our gut so we can trust our gut so that we can make more automatic decisions that are typically going to be good decisions. Long-term decisions, those that are gonna have higher dollar amounts impact multiple periods into the future. Then we wanna make a more formal decision-making process using the adage of measure twice and cut once. We're kind of in the middle here because we got the renting, which is probably gonna lock us into at least a month most likely a year so we probably are leaning more towards a more formal decision making process even though it's not multiple years because uh, it's going to be a significant amount of time we can't basically tinker or test on a day-to-day uh, -day kind of basis with the decision making process and of course moving is not an easy thing to do so we want to consider how long we're going to be uh, in the rental property and kind of what our idea will be of our longer term plans with regards to the renting or the place we're going to be staying so number one seek web help in picking features so we want to be looking online great resources online to help us out with our decision making process that were not there in prior years uh, if you don't know what features you're, are available in your area, try exploring websites uh, of online apartment locator tools. So there's a lot of locator tools that used to be that we that what we had to do is like look in the phone book for apartments that are around us in a particular area, then call them and to determine if they have anything available that we need, usually by the size of the apartment, one bedroom, two bedroom, and then we can kind of ask for the amenities and then we got to go over there and look at it to get some idea of what is actually there. Clearly these days, you can search online for things such as the availability of studios or one bedrooms or two bedrooms and then and so on and then you can also search by the amenities you can also get at least some pictures to see those actual amenities that are there you get reviews so that you can't very easily have the apartment place just straight out lie to you although i don't think any of this stuff really means that you wouldn't want to go look at the place i'd still want to look at the place before moving into the place but you can get a good preliminary search much more easily these days than in the past which is great so you can search for apartments based simply on whether you want to buy one or two bedroom apartment or buy other features such as like a pool or something like that it's a great way to find out both what your what your pad will cost and what neighborhood have the features you want so clearly if you look from neighborhood to neighborhood then it's likely that the cost will be somewhat similar from you know a certain location to location based on the size of the of the uh, place you're looking at so number two avoid choosing a home based on the perceived value you can get a great deal on an apartment with a uh, vaulted ceilings and an island kitchen but the neighborhood may not be what you're looking for so clearly if you're if you're basing just on kind of like one factor and just how the place looks uh, and not taking into consideration the other factors you want to make sure you have a weighted out average of, of the different factors so that you get the best purchase you can obviously the weight of the different factors will depend on your personal taste so or it's missing other things that topped uh, your list of desired features so clearly some of those desired features are going to be you know a matter of taste and, you, and once again you kind of like to measure those on a side-by-side -side comparison it would be nice if you can come up with some kind of utility some kind of scale 
where you can actually <laughs> where you can actually calculate out which are the most important things versus the least important things so that you can get a get a realistic comparison between them so don't make the mistake of renting an apartment because it seems like a good deal according to someone else's needs but not a good deal based on your needs so whenever we get advice from someone else clearly when you get it seems obvious but when we get advice from someone else that advice is is what they're looking for it's, it's their advice on what their preferences are and most likely it's a reflection of the decisions they've made because all of us when we make decisions we then rationalize our decisions so i mean if you talk to someone who purchases a home instead of renting a home more likely than not they're going to tell you the virtues of purchasing a home rather than renting a home because that's what they did and they're going to rationalize the rightness of their decision if you talk to someone that's renting a home versus purchasing a home that's probably what they're going to do and most decisions are like that that doesn't mean that other people's opinions are not something you should take into consideration but you gotta you gotta view them from the perspective that clearly they're going to advocate the decisions that they that they have actually made most of the time and you want to you want to take that into consideration from your perspective your perspective might be different and so you gotta you, you know just put that into the into the calculation here number three call a broker in your area look online or in physical phone book for numbers for apartments in your area so you can obviously pull out the trusty phone book and look up the apartments call at least two and ask about which rental communities and neighborhoods have the most features that you want within your price range so if you talk to a professional uh, that's in the rental area or a rental apartment they're going to know who their competition is they of course will be biased to some degree on their particular place and try but they're going to have a good idea of what's around that place and what are the prices from here to there especially if you're talking to someone that owns the rental property or a rental management company so ask about uh, specials you may be able to find an apartment that would normally go for 1000 a month for 800 per month because the broker will get a commission if you choose a property they recommend make sure the locator calls ahead to see if the two or three properties you like have the best units available so if you do have a broker that's going to help you with the purchase of an apartment then note obviously the broker is going to going to get paid for that possibly making a commission that's going to influence their decision making process or their behavior as long as you're you understand that then they, they could of course have more knowledge in it in it to help you out with it but they're them working as an agent their interests are slightly different than yours their interests are driven by by the uh, payment clearly number four best rental listing sites for 2022 according to investopedia best renting uh, listing sites so these are some sites that you can look on these are the, some of the big ones that you can do some side-by-side -side comparisons they keep on adding more and more tools to help with your searching process and you can one is going to be for example the zillow rental uh, manager so if you look at zillow then they have more tools that uh, that have the neighborhood around there you, they might have the schools that are around there and they have different rankings for how close other stuff is and so on so they're adding more and more tools on some of these uh, rental sites that are quite useful so zillow is one of the big ones for the overall then we got avl best for screening prospective tenants and then we've got the apartments.com best for attracting qualified applicants and then we got the rentometer best for cost comparable so you can take a look at those tools online as you go through the process number four always call a community before visiting before you visit a property call before visiting to get a quote on prices so if you're going to go visit somewhere if you're going to take the time to drive out there it'd be best generally to let them know you're going out there so you could talk to someone have them guide you around and so on and so forth noting that of course when you're there they're going to kind of be a salesperson to some degree uh as as you're there so you might not want to commit to making a decision at that point in time but it would be good to have someone to talk to as you're checking out the place so once you are on the property the leasing agent may hope to wow you with features but on the phone it's all about the numbers compare the figures you receive from your locator with the number you gather from online and local apartment locator services so clearly if you get any quotes from the the person at the property you want to compare those to what you are finding on your online resources number five tour properties in person 
while virtual tours can be found on most apartment uh, complexes websites there's no substitute for visiting a community in person so it's great to get that preliminary kind of look online and they do have a lot of images online now of the different facilities so you get a pretty good feel but that's not the same thing as actually going to the place and and some of the things in the in the actual place if you go there you get a better idea of you know how close the apartments are for example i mean if you look on the online tools you're going to get you're going to get an idea you could see the pool you could see the online amenities they have you could see the general layout of the structure and get a feel for it but you can't really see you know quite really how big the pool is for example isn't always there or what the amenities actually look like inside how big if there's a gym what's the actual size of the gym is there just like one machine in the middle there do you have a full-size gym what are you really talking about uh with the gym and if you're going into the actual apartments themselves it's nice to know how close are the apartments you know what's you know how how noise you know what's the um, amount of noise filter that's going through uh, the apartments, are they structured in such a way for, you know, optimal, you know, privacy and whatnot, even though you got kind of close together apartments. So those things are a lot easier to, to see uh, in person and can have a, you know, significant impact. Websites will provide an idea of what the community and interior look like and should be used as an initial screen. Walking around your potential new neighborhood and apartment will give you a better feel for the location. Also, don't limit the search to one property, visit at least two so you have a comparison. So if you go to one property and you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. But if you have nothing else to compare it to, then, you know, if you, if you have two properties, you're probably gonna you're gonna say this one is I like this one for whatever reason more than the other one, and so you you want to have a, a benchmark of some thing to compare to. So six, uh, reevaluate your feature list during the during the very first step of the process of finding a fabulous new place to live, one that's uh, also easy on your wallet. You developed a list of what features that are important to you in and around your new home. You should have also decided what you are willing to pay for them. Now that you have at least a couple of different properties to choose, see if you still hold the same values. When you actually go through and look through the places, your values could actually change a bit. You, you might be wowed by a couple things like, ah, it is nice to have a gym right there. That, that is, and you, <laughs> so you might then, but then before making the decision, you probably want to go and say, okay, let me reevaluate my, my, my list here and prioritize it again, possibly, and try to determine and which is best based on a, a relevant comparison. So adjust your list accordingly. Uh, so as to which features is worth being uh, before doing your final comparison of cost versus home value. The bottom line, once you know what you want and what it will cost, sit down and think about your choices in the following two ways. Number one, look at your actual budget. Consider whether one apartment would leave you with more money left over. Number two, evaluate an apartment's worth, uh, worth based on the sum of values you have assigned to the features from your list. So one, affordability, clearly. And then number two, you want to think about these features and try to value those features. And if you could assign a dollar value to them so you can kind of make a comparison on a, on a, on measurable terms, then that would be good. How much, how much is the gym in there worth to you, right? Is it, does it replace the gym fee that you're paying or something like that? Could you go, how much is the pool worth? So, Make sure the actual rent you pay is within reason for what you can afford. Knowing you have an actual value uh, for what's important to you will enable you to make a decision on where you live based on your own needs instead of a community advertisement. So you obviously you don't wanna make your decision just simply on the gut in this case, just on the advertisement because your gut hasn't been trained enough. You know, you train your gut so you can trust your gut and on this decision, you haven't, you know, you're not renting every day. So your guts, your guts not ready for that kind of thing. You got to think about it more. Factors, location, uh, building exterior, building interior, financial aspects, layout of facilities. These are just some general categories that you want to basically keep in mind when you're looking through the, the apartment, obviously location, the building factors, the building interior, the financial aspects, aspects and layout and facilities. So the location, 
Is it close to schools, church, a synagogue? If those are important to you, then of course you want to locate those. Those online tools often have rankings and so on of schools and churches and stuff like that. So those online tools are great. Shopping, you know, what kind of shopping area? Do you have a car? Is it, you, how far can you go? Do you want to walk to the shopping places and whatnot? Oftentimes those online tools have tools like that to help you out to determine how, how much you need a car and what's around you, what's walkable. Uh, public transportation, do you need to get on buses and trains? How close are those items to you? Again, many of those online tools are helpful to determine how close some of those other facilities are. Recreation, does it have the recreational needs uh, that, you, that you need? Is it close to your gym if you want the gym or other kind of whatever your recreation is? Building exterior condition of the building and the grounds. So clearly, you, you know, that's going to be one of the things that's going to be apparent to you when you're comparing and contrasting how, how well built are the buildings and you might want to consider in an apartment how sound transparent they you know how well are they built for sound since you're close by to people and so on parking facilities and recreation so do you have the needed parking that you that you need in that place in the recreational facilities building interior ex exits and security so clearly hopefully you're feeling safe in the in the event that there's an emergency that you can get out of there or something you got the exits and security um, if you need uh, the security depends on the area are you feeling safe in the area <laughs> right hallway maintenance are the are the other you know the common areas well kept condition of the elevators so if you have the elevators you don't want to be in an elevator that you think you're going to die and every time you're going home that could be stressful so if you have to have an elevator i don't like elevators personally i don't like working in big office buildings because those elevators are horrible and then they lock the stairs on you so you can't even use the stairs if you want to like i don't mind going up five no you got to go in there. whatever any case make sure the elevator's not a death trap access to mailboxes so you want to make sure you got that financial aspects the rent length of lease obviously is going to be important the security deposit and so that could differ from place to place utilities and other costs so who's paying for the utilities are you doing it or you know what utilities are you responsible for that could differ from place to place layout of the facilities condition and the size uh closets uh carpeting and appliances so what is the you know what kind of stuff do they have inside how important is it for you to have you know the nicer you know amenity or things that inside like the carpeting the appliances and the sink type and whatnot type of heat and air conditioning which can be crucial depending on where where you are at plumbing of water pressure plumbing and water pressure storage areas the room size doors locks and windows so all you know kind of a list of things you might want to just have in mind as you're going through your comparisons